Hey everyone, welcome back. Uh, first of all, sorry that I haven't been around as often as I usually am up here on YouTube, out here, in here, on here, on YouTube. It's definitely on YouTube. This video, I'm gonna tell you why that's been, what I've been up to, and then we're gonna open some shoes because everyone loves that and I just got a box of four pairs of shoes. I actually don't know what's in there, but we're gonna find out together. So the last couple videos I uploaded were about Western States and how I was out there filming. That project that I was hired to do out there has actually been what's been taking up the majority of my time that I usually have been devoting to uploading videos on this channel. So there were some delays in production that I couldn't control. I just finished it up this week, sent it off to the sponsor. Uh, they loved it. Uh, now I have to just uh, finish the color grade, do a few tweaks on a few things here and there with it, and then I'll send it off to them for their use. I believe what's gonna happen is they're gonna upload it to their channel. So I'll post a video here when that happens with a link so that you can know where to go to watch that. It was the hardest film for me to put together because the story was so challenging. And you'll see why when you watch it, but yeah, basically that has been taking up a ton of my time over the last like six weeks. Also, I've been traveling all around filming this guy named Rob, who you probably know from the podcast Training for Ultra. He just finished the Triple Crown of 200s, which is amazing and I was able to go out to Washington to film him at the Bigfoot 200 and then back out to California to film at the Tahoe 200 and then out to Utah, which I just got back from, to film the Moab 240. So over the past like four months, basically, with these four trips, I've been gone for almost four weeks out of those four months, which has been really tough in a lot of ways on family and just everything. And with all of that travel and with this huge Western States project, that's why I haven't been uploading videos here regularly over the past couple weeks. Um, that's definitely changing because now I'm back. I don't have any travel scheduled for the rest of the year and I'm just gonna be able to put my head down at work and start pumping out videos, hopefully. <laughs> I'll have like vlog behind the scenes stuff for all of those races as well. Uh, Bigfoot, Tahoe, and Moab. Uh, that was incredibly fun. I met so many really cool people, uh, developed some friendships along the way, and got to see these amazing places and these amazing races. Uh, Candace and Destination Trail put on some incredible events. And I don't know, maybe one day I'll do one, but 200s are a totally different ball game. So that's coming, not real soon, but eventually it's probably gonna be like an episode series up on Amazon Prime. Uh, that could change but that's what we're hoping for. So then also during this time, the last actual running video I put up, I believe was about the Mohican 100, where I got really injured. Uh, so here's an update on that. This was like a major like life change basically, and it's been really tough. And I have kind of been putting some video together like over the time, but honestly, it's been just a really tough time since this injury. So at the Mohican 100, as you saw in the last video, I fell at mile 83 and twisted my ankle. Didn't know exactly what was going on with it. Um, wasn't able to finish the race, but. So as you know, leading up to the Mohican 100, I was going to physical therapy three times a week for my IT band syndrome. That ended up being fine during the race, uh, but then I fell, hurt my ankle. So right after that, I took a couple weeks off running. Uh, the swelling took maybe like two weeks to go down, which was kind of longer than normal. Uh, and then I didn't really have a whole lot of range of motion. And then like my Achilles started hurting and just like all sorts of weird symptoms. Oh, also right after that, two weeks after that was when I went out to Western States. So I had to like be active and move around on it and run 
here and there and that actually probably was bad for it and delayed my progress quite a bit. So after I got back from Western States, I went and saw a doctor and they said it was definitely sprained badly. After looking at the x-rays, that's basically it. It's just a sprain. And so I pushed, I was like, okay, this has been like several weeks. I'm still having a really hard time like walking on it. Can we do anything else? And I actually, I actually had to ask, I said, can I get an MRI to see like if there's any damage at all? And the doctor was like, well, Let's take a look at your insurance. And I have really good insurance, but even with that, still the best she could do was say, okay, we have to wait six weeks. And we'll say that during those six weeks, you've been doing physical therapy because you have been doing these exercises and you have seen your physical therapist. So after six weeks, insurance will approve an MRI, maybe. So we applied for an MRI through insurance. I'm like, just like so frustrated with the way insurance works here in this country because I was having a hard time walking because of the pain, couldn't really run at all. I wasn't even approved to go get a test to be able to tell me if something was wrong. So that was really frustrating. After sending some letters and everything, insurance approved the MRI, went and got it about eight weeks after the injury, had to wait a week for the results, then had to wait another week for my appointment with an actual ankle specialist. So now if you're following the math, we're 10 weeks out from this injury and I still haven't run. Guess what? You tore cartilage. <laughs> That's not good. Like tearing cartilage is not as bad as breaking a bone, but it can still cause permanent damage if you don't deal with it properly. So the fact that it was too painful to run on for most of that time was actually a good thing because running on it would have just aggravated it more and made the healing worse. So what he told me basically was at this point it had been 10 weeks and from looking at it, okay, you're feeling pain. The pain is actually not totally related to the injury. It has to do with the area surrounding it and lots of different complicated stuff that I'm not a doctor, so I'm not gonna try and repeat everything. That running on it at this point, 10 weeks out is not gonna cause further damage, even though you will still feel quite a bit of pain. So I said, okay. I'm signed up for a hundred miler in two weeks. What do you think the chances are me being able to run that and not cause permanent damage? And he just looked at me and he was like, run a hundred miles in two weeks. And I said, just give me the answer. Am I going to do permanent damage? He goes, Nope. But he did say, I don't want you to run downhill until it's been about three to four months. So over those two weeks, I ran a few times. But nothing long. I think the longest I ran was like a seven miler or something. Uh, and then went to the Hallucination 100 with zero expectations. Like actually thought that I might stop after 10 miles and ended up finishing that thing. <laughs> It is a perfect example of how most of what we go through is just like in our head during these races. Because I had no fitness, I had no endurance. My legs, my body were not ready. I just kept going. <laughs> and a lot of it has to do with my friend, Matt Cantrell, who I basically ran every step of that race with. We were both dealing with stuff leading up to that race where our training wasn't perfect. So we just said, Let's just work together and let's get through this thing. So it was amazing. Got the monkey off my back, finished a hundred miler. I feel great about it. Like I feel good. Like I'm just so relieved. I'm back on track. No more disappointment about this year. You know, I had high, high expectations going into it. Things didn't work out. I made the best of what I had. There's definitely gonna be a big race video about that as soon as I'm able to edit it. But that's basically how my running and injury stuff has been going over the last couple months. I feel good now, I'm able to go run. I won't really start training again until probably like November. So just a couple more weeks of downtime before I really start more regular running routine. Right now I'm just running for fun. And then two things product related. I'm working with this company called Hemp Daddies. They're CBD oil products and I'll be putting together a little video about what I think about that. And also I will finally put out my Sunto 9 review video. A couple months ago Sunto sent me this watch to do a review on it. And I told him I really want to get through a hundred miler before I put 
everything out there in a video reviewing it. There's definitely some really good stuff about it. There's definitely some things I really don't like about it. And so it's gonna be a perfectly honest review. I'm not being paid to do it. And I think that's about it as far as updates. The one thing I would like to do is do more like question and answer videos, uh, maybe even some live streams or something. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. As I've been sitting here, I've been um, just kind of compiling all the footage for this big Triple Crown project with Rob. I think it's gonna be really cool. I'm terrified to start putting it together. There's not that much out there about 200 mile races. Let's open some shoes because I know that's what everyone likes so much. Once again, I am on the ultra red team. So keep that in mind. I got a couple pairs, Duo, King, Olympus, and Torin. Uh, first, I got the new Torin 4. Let's see this. Ooh. This is just the regular version. This is not the mesh version. Wow, they've updated the sole on this. That's pretty cool. The Torin has been pretty much my go-to shoe for road running for years. They still have these extra supports here for the laces so that when you tighten them down, feel great on your foot. Recently, I've also been using the Duo quite a bit. Let's do the new Olympus. Now this, I do not have this version of the Olympus yet. I've been running all my races this year in the 3.0 because I didn't want to change anything uh, mid-season, but this is the 3.5 in the green and orange. Pretty sick colors right here. There's really not much difference in the 3 and the 3.5. Basically, this front area has changed just a little bit. I don't know, that's kind of it. If you like the 3.0s, the 3.5s should be basically no different. Next, the new Duo 1.5. Duos are a shoe that I've been running a ton of road miles in recently. I really like them because they feel very similar to the Olympus, which is what I run all my hundreds in. This is the new version of the Duo to address a lot of the problems that popped up with the original version, specifically like tearing along uh, these flex points right here. And then the tongue is another thing that I'm really interested in seeing how this works out because apparently they've added more friction on the tongue so that it stays in place better. So if you can see in here, the heel cup, very flexible now. There's basically these two support systems that are kind of like here and here and the back along the back is almost nothing. It's just basically just that fabric. So I'm really psyched to try these out because they're totally different. Uh, when I actually do a full video on these, I'll compare them. The sole looks pretty much the same. Excited about that because I really like the sole. And the last one. This is the new King MT2. I cannot wait to take these out on the trails. I really like the original King, but there were a few things that I would have changed. I love the stone guard. I love how flexible the shoe is. I'm really excited to take these out. What I love these shoes for, kind of like shorter trail runs where I'm being a little more aggressive or super muddy trail runs. The sole is the meanest sole that they have on any of their shoes. You just feel amazing because you don't feel like you're slipping anywhere. So that's the King. All right, so that's it. Um, I am going to get working on some videos for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Sorry that it's been a while, but I'm back. And I can't wait to share more of what's been going on over the past couple weeks with you guys. These trips have been amazing, but with four weeks of travel over the last four months, Western States Project, which is basically done. You guys will be able to see it soon. I'll let you know here when it comes out and where to find it. And then also with my injury, it's been tough guys. Thank you guys for following along. Thank you for supporting. Thanks for watching. Thanks for commenting. Let me know if any of those ideas that I had earlier about interacting more would be cool. And yeah, stay tuned. I'll see you again soon. Bye.